Hi Lumineers, welcome to The Lighter Side Show. I'm your host, Jamie Butler, teaching you how to be an everyday medium. Before we dive in with our guest, Ursula Lentini, with Stuff Happens, Don't Make It Worse, I wanna go through some house notes with you because we have three great ones. The first one is I'll be lecturing at California State San Bernardino, October 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. Tickets are on sale now. If you're out in California, come see me. We're going to be talking about channeling, trans-channeling, and I'm going to be taking questions from the audience. Fun. All those college kids have such great questions. Can't wait. Second housekeeping note is that we have a public channeling happening October 21st, and that's here at the Center for Love and Light, and it's going to be Wine and Grace Night. So what this means, if you are here in Atlanta or want to come, you can bring your wine and your dinner and sit down and listen to Grace answer all your questions for the evening. It's a lot of fun. Thirdly, I am starting a channeled series with our dear friend Darshana Patel, and my class is going to be on October 27th. It's the first one coming up, and that's going to be on the Law of Attraction. And Darshan and I are going to exchange evenings and build on top of all the laws that are kind of governing us. Or are they? We might talk a little bit about that now with our fabulous guest, Ursula Lentini. <laughs> Ursula is an ordained minister. She's a spiritual advisor, and she does subconscious healing work, and it is phenomenal. So happy to have her here. We actually had a great conversation with her on the Lighter Side show a while ago talking about ancestral lineage and energy. But today, we're not going to talk about this, are we? It all comes into play, <laughs> but we are going to talk about how S happens in this language. Today we're talking about <laughs> stuff, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Shit happens. <laughs> Don't make it worse. Don't make it worse. Yes. <laughs> well, what do you mean by this? Yes. So let me tell you where this saying came from. Okay. My best friend in California, her father was Hispanic. He grew up on the east side of L.A., had a super rough lifestyle as yeah. a child. And uh, he, he told us a story once of how he would climb into the, climb up the high fence of the Juvie Detention Center. He would break into Juvie Hall because they were nicer there than his family was. Oh. So this tells you, you know, where he's come from. And he would guide us young women as we were out on the streets having fun and exploring life. And he would have all these sayings. And, I'm, and I asked my girlfriend last week, I said, oh, my God, yeah, stuff happens. Don't make it worse. Where would you get that from? And she's like, I don't know. And I'm like, uh-uh, that must have been Papa Carlos. And she's like, yeah, probably. So he would always say, watch your back. And, you know, when you're out doing that, you know, you got to be. And so he would give us all these life lessons of things that he's learned along the way. I'm sure this has come from him. When something bad happens, yeah. because we're all crazy and we don't have sanity as our focus, we always tend to make it worse. Okay, Why? Yeah. First of all, I like to because we're dumb. enjoy that you're calling us all insane. <laughs> because we're dumb. I'm not going to argue that point. Because we're human beings. Because right? we yes. can't figure things out. Because we make emotional decisions. Wait, but aren't we designed to be emotional? Yes. Are, are there any other ways to make a decision? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, emotions okay. are supposed to be like decorations, not our main thrust. Because emotions typically are a reaction that's been predetermined by an event. So when we're afraid, say we get in a car accident, right? Yes. So car accident, oh my God, that's terrible. Now every time we get into the car, we're like, <gasps> that's an emotional reaction based on a past event. Yes, it's almost like muscle memory in a way. Yes. Okay, so you're identifying that most of us will make decisions based off that emotional muscle memory rather than the Bringing what? in some logic, channeling in some of our divine consciousness, resourcing intelligence itself to say, okay, let me pause. This jacked up thing just happened. Let me pause and not have an emotional response and duplicate it and triplicate it into something worse than it really is. And then we can avoid complicating the situation, making a sane 
decision on how do I, how do I want to respond to this situation and then like get out of it well, quickly. How do we even know we're doing it from that emotional memory? We don't recall. That's why I'm calling us idiots. <laughs> <laughs> we're just we're, we're not idiots. We're just, just ignorant of the fact. You don't have like a magic button that you can show us that says, "Hey, wait." Yes, pause. That's you a do? breath. A breath. Taking a breath. Everybody, take a breath. You see how everything just calms down immediately? Yeah, I'm having this sudden creative idea to do like um, rub-on tattoos that just says take a breath mm -hmm. so we can put them on the back of our hands. Yes. Or maybe some of us on our forehead. <laughs> <laughs> that would mean tell everybody else, else. take a breath. Yes. I'm coming. <laughs> just take a breath. Here I am. Take a breath. Breathe. Or just a t-shirt. I just t-shirt. Yeah. Gotta yeah. take a breath. That's fun. I like to teach my students that pause creates momentum. It does because see, we move out of reaction into clarity, hopefully, resourcing our divine intelligence, which we couldn't be alive without it, and then making a decision from there. In contemplating this discussion, I remembered a book that I read many years ago. We didn't own it, so I don't even know the title of it. And it's this crazy book. So the, this gentleman's laying in the bed, and there's a tree, and it's scratching against the window. And he's like, oh, I can't take this. I can't sleep. So he gets up. Sounds like an Edgar Allan Poe poem. Kind of, because it's a little <laughs> bit twisted. He goes to the doctor, and he's like, doctor, I can't sleep. This branch. Me as a kid, I'm like, cut down the tree. Cut down the branch. <laughs> like, what's it? Down. But that's, the tree. that's not a part of the story. Uh. So the doctor says, okay, I know how to fix this. Go get a chicken. And keep the chicken in the house. So the man's like, chicken? He's like, yeah, go get a chicken. So the guy gets a chicken, and now he's got the chicken in the house. And the chicken's going cluck, cluck, cluck. And the branch is going, hey, hey, hey. and he's like, I can't sleep. So he's, the doctor's like, come back in a week. So he comes back in a week, and he's like, oh, this isn't really working. And the guy says, oh, okay, okay, get a goat. Get a goat. And he's like, yeah, get a goat. So then he brings the goat in. Because he, he had to keep him in the house. Right. Got to keep the goat in the house, too. So the goat's like, rrr, 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 do, 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 do. And then, so the story goes on and on, right? And, and you're, as a kid, you're like, wait, you know, this is really, what's, why isn't the... So the, now he's got five animals in the house. And he's like, doctor, I'm like, it's not working. And the doctor's like, okay. Get rid of the horse, get rid of the dog, get rid of the goat, get rid of the chicken. So he gets rid of all of those things. And he's laying in the bed. And there's the branch. And he's like, oh, this is better. I can sleep now. And all this time, I'm thinking, this is the craziest story in the whole wide world. Why would anyone write a story then? But then if you look at it, say, normal course of life, mm -hmm. you can give almost any example. Say uh, your business is going poorly, and you start taking money where you shouldn't be taking money. And then you're like, okay, now you have to lie about it. And then if you're lying about it and you're taking money, then you have to pretend like that's not who you are. And then you start drinking because you're too stressed out. And now you're driving and drinking because how else are you going to get home? You see how one thing easily slips into the other. Or you're having an affair. You're unhappy in your marriage. Mm -hmm. So then you meet this fine lady. And then all of a sudden you're talking and you feel better. Then one thing leads to the other. Now you're lying again. Now you're having an affair and you're lying and you feel guilt and shame. You have just taken one problem, unhappy marriage, and completely complicated it. And now instead of dealing with the one problem, we have this house full of animals <laughs> that are driving us crazy. <clears throat> but we do it over and over and over and over again. Yeah, I see it again and again and again with clients. And they don't know why there's so much going on. Right. How did my life get so crazy? As if they weren't involved in any of the decision-making process. Because they weren't, because they weren't fully present when the first thing happened. So that's why we feel like we can't own it, and we want to blame it on an external source. Exactly. Okay, so beyond taking a breath, you, what is there that's going to say, okay, Jamie, after you've taken that breath, you really have to stay present now. We're making this decision. You know, is it practice? It is practice and, and support, right? You help people, I help people, mm -hmm. um, people who are listening and are on their spiritual path. We want, we all want to be a good person and we all want to do the right thing. 
Because we know when we're doing the right thing, less S happens. <laughs> that is S in air quotes for those of you who can't see the video. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. If we have support, right? So when I'm going to do something new, i like, ugh. I know what happens when I do something new. Caution, red flag, red, yellow tapes, you know, out. So it's to slow down because we're always on such a fast track. There's always too many stimulations, too many responsibilities, too many things, distractions going on at any given time. So to be fully present with ourselves means to really clear, declutter our mind, declutter our responsibilities, declutter our social activities, and to be fully present with who we are inside. That is so crazy. I'm having a thought right now because I recently went through a, a, a difficult transition, a surprise transition that was a bit, you know, jarring. Small. Yeah, we just, it was unexpected. And one of my first reactions, you know, besides crying and being emotional, was I went home and I cleaned all the closets in the house. See? Perfect! But, like, my husband's like, what, why are you taking this on? What do you, like, you have so much on your plate. I was like, we have to donate everything that we're not touching, that we're not using. I mean, I hauled out furniture. I <laughs> cleared that house you out. You were really upset. <laughs> <laughs> so I simplified, but I never, I didn't put, put together things together. It was just something that I could do to... Recenter. Get me, yeah, in the moment and focused on the things that were around me. And, and there's another theory that I've been um, becoming more aware of lately is we really are at capacity almost all the time. So uh, we're our, running at 100%. Yeah, except exactly. when things, it seems like it, right? Mm -hmm. So the achiever within us is like, oh, I'm running yeah. at 100%. Look at me. And then the person who like needs to breathe is like, I can't, you, what? Okay, so that's not good for that part. So depending on who you want to be okay. at that any given moment, 100% is great or 100% like, is not okay. Yeah, but I didn't know. Right, right. <laughs> Depends on who you want to talk to. So when change is coming in our life, we have to take a portion out and move it aside so we can bring in something new. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, mentally, physically. And then when we have space inside of us, that's where we can have like a download. That's where we can have clarity. Because we're not trying to look through, you know, all of our emotions to say, what do I do now? Let me have a knee-jerk reaction and go move into addiction or hang out with the people who are not a good influence on me or, you know, go into depression or shut down and isolate, you know, because we have so many automatic responses and these are the autopilot things that are going on in our life and then we sent wake up one day and we're like how did this all happen how did I get into this position yeah when you fall into autopilot what are some of the the, the signs that we can look for ourselves are there any self-counseling techniques that we can use I mean besides finding Ursula Lentini <laughs> online and dialing her and going come on <laughs> what is going on well, there's a morning practice I have found is the most um, grounding thing. So if we can have, before the day gets out of hand, to have a little spiritual routine of self-care. Oh, I like a spiritual routine. And that could be having tea for some people. That could be doing bows. That could be chanting. That could be taking a quiet walk around the block. And a part of that should be mirror talk. So when we look in the mirror, and instead of just brush our teeth or look for what eyebrow needs to get plucked or, you know, how bad is the acne that day, or, you know, instead of picking and poking and all the gray hair, or, you know, we criticize. So instead of any of that tape on, I love you, on the post-it, on the mirror, and start our day like that. She's talking to my heart. Who loves a Sharpie and a good post-it pad? <laughs> Me. Oh, my God. I like hiding them everywhere, finding them later. And, of course, I don't really enjoy pulling them out of the washing machine. But it's happened several times. But what you're to doing to myself is, is creating something outside the autopilot. Oh, I like that. You're giving yourself a new idea. That's why you need the reminder, because it's new. Yes. 
Is it bad then that most of mine say I love you? <laughs> That's not a new idea to me, but I sure love hearing it. <laughs> it's necessary. We yes. should all do that. I think that the mirror companies of America should have I love you embedded into those mirrors. That'd be fantastic. What about the car mirror? Even the rear, the rear, I love you, that's right. Gratitude mirrors. Yes. I mean, you've got a concept. I that's think. it. We should Gratitude start a new mirrors. business. I'm in. Okay. <laughs> I like to start a whole lot of new conversations with Ursula right now, but we're going to avoid building product as we're talking to you, <laughs> Lumineers. But if you have any ideas, please send them in the comments below. We'll listen. So the self-care, to have yeah. a touchstone, to have... a one moment a day where you're looking at yourself in the mirror saying, what's up? But you like the morning. Why is that? Because it's the, before the day gets out of hand. Have you noticed the day tends to get out of hand the more time that gets involved? <laughs> so set ourselves up for success. First thing. Okay. So for night owls, before they go to bed, to do a reevaluation of how did I show up in the day, you know, was I a jerk to myself? Was I short with my children? You know, to do just to do this reevaluation and to set a new intention. Like, I don't want to be a jerk anymore. Like, it sucks to be a jerk. So I'm not going to be a jerk tomorrow. I promise I'm not. I'm going to get a post and don't say no jerking tomorrow. <laughs> Communication is so important. It is. And we don't spend enough time talking to our own parts. No, we don't. I think we spend a lot of time talking to the many voices and layers in our head, but not to us. Right. In a kind way. So if you have an inner critic, that, that'll take the mic and run all day long. You know, not to put you on the spot, but do you have some examples of kind phrases that you say to yourself or talk My to My favorite clients? one is, it's okay. I love it. It's okay. So I'm like, ah, I'm white. It's okay. No, it's not okay. No, it's okay. Because a lot of times I'll show up right on time, but I'll have this thing that wants to freak out about being late. Just for like drama, you know, because my life is so easy and smooth. Like, I, this is my one little piece of drama. It's like eating chocolate. Like, I'm like, no! Ah! <laughs> I get some kind of crazy hit out of that. So, you know, for whatever thing, or, oh, I did that wrong, or, oh, I made a mistake, or, oh, I overbooked two people, or, you know, because I make mistakes, and I, I know that already. Wait, because you're an idiot human. That's right. Okay. <laughs> And it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so I have this one part that says it's okay. So in the beginning of my spiritual path, when I was being awakening to all of the garbage that goes on on a regular basis, and just being amazed <laughs> at what not okayness is happening, that I had to create this other part that said, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And forgave me for all of my mistakes and all of my misunderstandings and all of the stupidity that I've been running. And that's acceptance. And acceptance is golden in the spiritual path. Because once we can accept the idiotness that we live with, that we were born into, that we inherited from our mother's side of the family and our father's side of the family, <laughs> that we karmically have been entitled to carry that burden and to, you know, pay that debt. That's a lot. With acceptance, do you have to like it? Like what? Like whatever you're accepting. Do you have to no, like it or love it or <laughs> no, embrace it? And, mm, like, so what is acceptance? Because I think there's so many of us who are like, okay, I accept this but still so freaking frustrated with it, right. don't want to connect to it, right. don't really want to accept it, but we're using the language because we know that's what we need to be doing. So That's the first step, right? So if something's ugly, just to say, oh, look, there's this ugly part of me, and I accept it. Now I don't have to fight with it. So all the energy that I take about fighting it or avoiding it or denying it, or blah, 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 blah all of that gets thrown aside. So now I have a place of openness because I can accept this ugly thing within me. And then somehow find a substitution for your fighting need. <laughs> well, that would be the love and acceptance. There you go. So that's the, that's the work I do, the subconscious work I do. So people will come in and they'll be like, I got five ugly parts. And I'm like, okay, let's, let's, let's meet them. So when we can be open to a conversation with something that's ugly within inside of us, 
then that's the beginning of a great healing. That's the first step. Yeah, communication. It's the best thing in any situation. Yeah. But I heard something else that you said that I want to get back to. And you mentioned karmic debt. Mm -hmm. What is it? What is that for you, Miss Ursula? <laughs> in metaphysics, because yes. like you said, I'm a reverend, right? So that's what centers for spiritual living. And that's a metaphysical mindset, organization, way of being. In metaphysics, we call it consequence. Cause and effect is one of the founding principles, right? You talked about principles earlier. Mm -hmm. Cause and effect. So if I'm a jerk... I'm not going to get away with it. Why? Well, maybe for a little bit. And maybe I'll have the illusion that that's okay. But when we're a jerk, there's a law that says that's not okay. And then that will have to be corrected. What? Who's doing that that's not okay and it's got to be corrected? Who's there's doing not that? a who. There's no explain, who. Explain. Explain, my friend. So a law is a law. Okay, Let's well, who look creates at the law? The consciousness of the universal creation. Gravity. Who created gravity? That's a law. Mm -hmm. If you live on the planet, you have to deal with gravity. Who created that law? <laughs> is it quantum physics? Quantum physics in met and metaphysics are very similar. Okay. Very similar. I think where I have a hard time is that there is somebody judging or saying oh. that something is good and something is bad because when I see energy at its purest, everything is okay. Right. I do see, however, in my experiences, only speaking for me, that if we are a jerk, we receive jerk back. Right. It's like a, a ripple effect or law of attraction, mm -hmm. something that Boomerang. You know, Newton explained to us. And you throw it out there Einstein and it's going to really. come back. Yes. But I don't feel like I threw it out there and somebody around was going, no. that was crap. No. We're going to make sure she pays for that shit nope. later. No. Nope. That is where I find a hard time. And in the sense, I think our general public believes that karma is a process to, or an excuse to give to other people that are doing bad things that we know that they're going to get it later. Or an excuse if something bad happens to them in this life that they'll tie it to another life where they had done something bad and it's finally getting to them. When I think living in the now, yes, I believe all our lives are tied together because time is stacked more than a linear experience, but I think living in the now doesn't give us the space to say, in my medieval life, I did that and that's why life is being mean to me now because we're not looking at the you now. <laughs> right, but that's also bringing Deflection. in mind. So in the world of karma, mm -hmm. where there's, uh, nature's always seeking balance. Yes. That's a law. Nobody really made that law up. But that's what it does naturally. Right. So in order for me to, because my heart's desire is to be a good person. And I'm under the illusion that everybody's like that. I believe everybody's wired like that, honestly. I do. So in order for me to be a good person, when I'm running shame or guilt or something like that, that's not a vibration that I'm jiving with because mm -hmm. that's against me being a good person. So I want to get rid of these negative things within myself. So for me not to have shame and guilt would mean I'd have to be proactive in that department. So if I've done some harm to somebody, I want to clean up that act Yes, for my own sake. So I want to forgive myself for being a jerk in the first place because that frees up a lot. It gives more space like we were talking about. So create more space for myself through that self-forgiveness. And then to take responsibility to be mature, to be a spiritual awake person, spiritually awake person, and to go back and say, hey, I emotionally responded to that thing. I realized I was harmful and hurtful when I said those words to you. You know, I'm very sorry. You know, I'm just doing the best I can, and I'm so sorry. And then that person go, yeah, I was thinking about that too, and you are a jerk, but I, I'm also a jerk. So I'm sorry for me being a jerk, so can we make up? And we do, because friends do that. Sisters and family members do that. That's the great way to move through. Yes. So, and that's karma. That's cleaning up karma. So maybe it's not always that clean and that obvious, but when we put something out there, it's going to come back. When we put good out there, it's going to come back. When we tithe, it's going to come back. 
that's just the law and the principles. And when we start understanding that from a non-emotionally reactive place, then we can move with those things and, tie, and, and continue. I am all for that. And it's not for the mind to understand, because the mind can't understand the universe. You said the mind doesn't understand the universe? Yeah. Why? The mind's ego-based. Okay, what's your definition of ego? Ah, uh, good question. Ah, I nailed it. <laughs> I, oh, is it man-made? Is it spiritually made? Do we need ego to, to view or see these things or to even hold the concepts of good or bad or judgment or these things? I think our ego was planted inside of us for evolution. Does that mean we get to get rid of it at some point? Well, I've tried. <laughs> You've tried? I've tried. You've tried sliding out of it like a nice like I've tried small black killing dress. It. I've tried killing it. I've tried <laughs> sticking it in a closet. I've tried burying it in a deep hole. It's not working. None of that works. Go ahead. You can try it. It doesn't work. Give it a big hug. Yeah. That's what you got to do. It, right? yeah, now it's coming down to accepting it, right. loving it, and have right. a conversation with it. Right. Right. That's working. That's working. But you think that's the point that doesn't allow our minds to understand the universe. Right. Because the ego is much smaller than the universe. I like that we can't understand the universe. I think it's important. I think the mystery, the amnesia aspect of all of this is saving our butts. Yes. <laughs> no kidding. When I, before when I started doing the spiritual work, I was like, oh, past life stuff. I can't wait. It's going to be so interesting. You know, I wonder who I was. I wonder what I've done. You know, wow. And then you start getting into it, and it's terrible. <laughs> it's so terrible. You're like, oh, what did that happen? Oh, no. Oh, my God. But it's no wonder they kind of do the amnesia thing. Mm, redo. Hit the redo button. Yeah, fresh start. Yeah, with a fresh start, we get to pretend that we're doing things for the first time. <laughs> and that makes us feel like we're achieving something and success. And, and it gives us a chance to do it better or right the next time. See, even when we remember, if we did remember, and I'm glad we don't remember, but just, just take our short lifespan. So we, if, say, we're going to go on a date... For a new person. All the other stuff that came up on other dates is going to be with us to sit there at, across the dinner table and be like, <laughs> okay, it's that's not just going in this far, lifetime. <laughs> Can you imagine if we remembered everything that we've ever done? Like, oh, this is having a child. Oh, this is being married. Oh, this is working. Oh, this is growing old. Oh, you know, I think I would sign up for that life as a hermit on top of a mountain if I remember all that. <laughs> I'm just saying. Yeah. But the whole reacting from emotions, mm -hmm. would you put that in the same place with your ego? Probably. I mean, do people yes. react with ego? Because the ego is the recorder. So if I got into a car accident, now I'm getting in the car, and I'm having a, a reaction, an emotional reaction because of a past experience, that's all ego. So if my spirit self, because there's our, to me, there's our ego self in mm -hmm. all of its parts, and then there's our spirit self, the one who doesn't really care. <laughs> they would get in the car after a car accident and be fine. Totally fine. Mm -hmm. Be like, new moment, new yep. car, new situation. Exactly. Not going to happen again. The clarity. Yes. But it's our ego that's like, oh, car, oh, remember what happened last time? <laughs> You're like, shut up. You're spoiling the moment. <laughs> Can we just drive and pretend this is a new moment? But, 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 no. No, ego won't let you, will it? No. Unless you breathe. Right. And start putting your, your practice tools in place. In place. And the, the deal is, when the ego starts trusting our spiritual self, then it'll be like, okay. Oh, wait, they have a telephone between the two of them? <laughs> it's a constant, they can talk. <laughs> it's a constant dialogue, except the ego is tagging the mic the whole day. <laughs> <laughs> It is, isn't it? It is. It's like, get in the back seat. Ego's <laughs> driving. Colleen behind the camera is like, I'm making Ego the, the chauffeur. It's driving everybody. It was true. I, I find that I can get these really intense moments of clarity, but it's when I am not engaging with the ego, per se. I mean, I, I could be 
doing my work in my sessions and readings, you know, lecturing, I could be cleaning my closets. But if I'm in a conversation with somebody else, I tend to go back to the idiot human. But in, in some ways, I kind of polish that and cherish that and, and put it on a shelf because I feel like if I ran on all cylinders at all times, then I wouldn't have those moments of mystery. And I feel like my amnesia would kind of disappear and the veil would be uncovered. And I know a lot of lumineers are like, isn't that what we're trying to get to? Or that's what I really want. And there's something, a part of me, like a, a teddy bear, a lovely, or a, you know, whoopee is what we call them, but nobody seems to know that term. I know whoopee. You know whoopee? I know whoopee. <laughs> Thank you. Like a whoopee. I hold on to it because I chose to be human. And right. I, I want to have my right. mistakes. And I want to fall and I want to hurt and I want yeah. to have all those vibrations in my life and yeah. not just constantly look at everybody's energy and go, oh, you know, I'd be jaded. I think I would end up extremely distant and sad. And granted, I do have those moments where, human, I did it again? Shit. <laughs> yeah. But that's the evolution. It really is. Because, you know, in the yin yang symbol, right, with the white and the black spots there. When we can move away from the darkness, from the heaviness of the human experience, there's a lot of pain being human, mm. a lot of pain, a lot of sadness. So people, when they're on their spiritual path, they're like, oh my God, this is really hard. <laughs> I didn't know this was so hard, because we're getting in touch with the sadness that we've been carrying and running away from mm. our whole life. That it's, is so true. You know, so... So we're now we're in touch with the sadness. We're like, okay, so life is hard. Things are sad. You know, we're mean to each other. Things are not okay. And then you're like, okay, and? So you put that aside. as just a part of the landscape of our inner world. And then we move on. Then when we can get to a place of really connection and our true spiritual self, loving everybody and everything, loving the day, loving the rain, loving the storms in life, and really understanding that this is a gift, that this life that we're experiencing now, regardless of how messy it can get, is a gift. And that's what you're talking about. I don't mind bumping my knee. I don't mind, you know, having an experience. I like it when it's cold and I have to put on a sweater. You know, if we were floating around being angels all day long, that probably could get boring too. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. <laughs> There's the total ease of it. Where's yeah. no more conflict? Right. You know, there's not a concept of chaos. Everything has a, a place or something. Like my human brain, my idiot human mm -hmm. ego brain, can't comprehend it. It just goes... <laughs> <laughs> and our spiritual I'm part... I'm so glad I got the words for it now. Yeah. Ursula, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Noise, sound effects, really. When we were talking in, we're in places that have no words, sound effects really apply quite well. <laughs> but when uh, I was watching a film around the Dalai Lama, <clears throat> and this one brilliant guy is like, hey, let's gather all the geniuses of the world and we'll solve the problems of today's world. And Dalai Lama's like, oh, yes, that's fine. Okay, yes. So I was like, oh, he said yes. So he went around and he got all the scientists and all the metaphysicians and the holy people and the smart people, and he like gathered them around. This big summit. Yeah. And then the film is showing this, and then, then these people can't get along. <laughs> they can't figure how to say hello to one another. They can't, like, organize themselves to take turns and share ideas. They can't decide on what topics they want to explore. It's this big mess. People get upset. People are sitting on the floor crying. Like, like it's just crazy. And then the Dalai Lama, they, they pan to him every once in a while. He's not involved with all of this. He's, on, he's doing his spiritual Dalai thing, you know. And then they would visit with him, and he'd be like, hmm, I don't know about this. I don't know. He was very human with all of his reactions about what the camera was filming and the questions he was. He was having a very human, like, I don't know. And everyone's like, the Dalai Lama, he's got, he's got all the answers. But I was recognizing... Wow, he's so spiritually evolved that he's being super human. He's being completely vulnerable. He's completely in the mystery. He's completely in the moment. 
And meanwhile, all these smart, wise people are like, oh, you know, like they get like a bunch of monkeys, you know, trying to figure it out. And they're the evolved ones, and he's the simple one, and he's like, I don't, I don't have a clue, really. <laughs> Got me. And in the beginning of the film, they said, kind of, there was a disclaimer saying, yeah, this is normal life, and as you're watching the film, think of it as your own story, because it's so easy to judge, right? You're like, oh, look at them, they don't know. But the guy who put the film together is like, think of it as your story. And then you're like, oh, I do that. Oh, yes. Uh huh. Oh, and the ego. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I was more like him who doesn't know anything. That's where I should be. Yeah, because when I think I know something, look at all the problems. So the not knowing could be part of the spiritual practice. It totally is, obviously. Well, it might not be obvious to all, <laughs> but it is. For I this really moment like, here I and now. Like, <laughs> I like not knowing. Yeah. yeah. I get a lot of It's people, easier. Yeah, they'll say, why don't you just ask your dead people? I can't believe you don't know what to do. Why don't you ask spirits? And I go, oh, that's a great idea. And they look at me like I'm crazy. Because you only do it all the time. I'm like, no. <laughs> just because I can have sex that does not mean I have sex all the time, and it's a great thing too. Right. <laughs> right. But you're being authentic to yourself. Because if you are always asking the beings who you have access to, you could easily move into a codependent situation there. Big time. And, and where would my decisions be? That's off the spiritual path. I would be making more stuff happen and more worse stuff to come. Exactly. If I leaned on this exactly. So much. Ha, ha, ha. Instead of taking a breath and being with the problem at hand, saying, hmm, what should I do here? So you're not making it three times worse. Not to push your buttons or anything. Go right ahead. But. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Bring it. I love you so much. Bring it, Jamie. What if the whole, like, the stuff has happened? Yeah. Totally, you, you, you were even breathing. Yes. You felt it coming, you're like... <laughs> I've been there, done that. <laughs> and this stuff happened anyways. Right. Where do what toolbox do we grab? Where where is it then? The opposite of what we want to do. What's that? Nothing. <laughs> Our American culture does not support nothing, <laughs> Ursula. I understand. It says, this. what is it? Um, no pain, no gain. You know, put your head down, persevere, push through. But you're saying, do nothing. Sit down. Mm -hmm. Just be with it. That is an act in and of itself. Difficult. It is very difficult. I'll admit. <laughs> but see that giggle right now? It's, it's delicious. Nothing. It's yes. delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. When it's worked and paid off a few times in a row, do nothing. It's like a fascinating new adventure to do nothing in the face of a problem. You mean do nothing like no actions. Right. No talking to it. Keep that quiet. Just point to her mouth. <laughs> That's you the troublemaker. Quiet. <laughs> what else is the act of doing nothing? Is it also the thoughts wrapped around it? For sure. Because those are the catapults. And so in, in the art of doing nothing, we don't have to include our community that we normally go to? Is Correct. it a singular it's, action yes. or is it a community action? At first it's the singular, right? Just like you, when you're like, when your people are saying, hey, how come you're not answering that? How come you're not ans asking your resources? And you're like, oh, I don't know. You're in the, your moment of nothingness. You're in the moment of the mystery. You're in the moment of wondering, oh, and becoming aware this is a problem here. Because sometimes, you know, we're just so used to, processing so much information and so many problems and so many issues that we're in the flow of problem land. Well, that's life. That's right. the flow. Yes. That's life. Yes. But if we can step out of it for a moment to have clarity to say, oh, look, I have an issue right now. Let me sit with it. So the practice of stepping out of it every morning mm -hmm. gives you the practice of being able to step out of it when it's happening. Yes. So those are our tools, like 
third wheel or mm-hmm. tricycle. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. So you don't have to crash every time. There's their training wheels that keep us, you know, balanced. It's practice. It is. Have you heard the term spiritual practice? I think I have. Yeah. <laughs> If yes. we're, if we're yes. feeding ourselves consistently with those things that feed our soul, that give us sanity, that make space around us, then we, ha- we have that as a resource. So when a crisis comes up and blindsides us, we're like, uh, excuse me, crisis. <laughs> Let me just sit with my silence, my sacred space, my tea, my walk around the block, whatever it is that feeds me, and be with you and see you for who you are and what you are instead of all my stories of every time a crisis showed up. Yeah. So my emotional reaction doesn't come in and make everything five times worse just because I love the drama. <laughs> <laughs> you sounded very good right there when you said I love the drama. <laughs> we all do. Yeah, it gives us something to do. Right. It makes us feel really important. Very important, yes, and especially getting through it, succeeding, then we have achieved something, right? Mm-hmm. I was thinking about what what can we do to lessen the the reaction time to um, a crisis happening or problem or issue? Because some of us, and I won't say I, I will find myself in a situation where I say, it's not right, but, this is my problem when I always use but, I'm going to be kind, I'm going to be polite, I'm going to just, I'm just going to get through this, because I don't want to engage, or I don't know what to say, but then I do that, and I kind of surrender myself a little bit, and I find myself even in a, like you said, a worse place, jeez, Ursula, you're good, and I find myself in a worse place, so how can someone like myself who's a pleaser, who right. likes to give, right. who keeps the balance in the room and does all that, mm-hmm. shorten that lag time of recognizing, who that doesn't need to be my job, right. and I need to do right. something. Right. So that conversation that you were just having is the land of codependence. Speak to me more. What yes. is this land of codependence? We do not like the land of codependence. Oh, so it's not like candy-coated or anything? No. Oh. It is when you're in it. And when you're out of it... Salty. It's salty. <laughs> it's land of salt and vinegar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> of apple cider vinegar. Yes. So the awareness of it. I just was having this conversation this morning with the client. She, she was like, but I think I'm doing good. I think I'm being helpful. I think I'm, you know, making a, a higher choice to, you know, be kind and all of that. And I said, yeah, that's what it looks like when you're in it. So it's as if we're in blue water. And somebody who's not codependent saying, oh, you're in blue water. We're so used to being in blue water that we can't see the blue. I'm like, I'm not in blue water. I'm being a good person. I'm like, mm-hmm, how else do you feel? How's your resentment level? Oh, pretty tapped out. <laughs> how's your self-love? Oh, no, no respect at all. No respect. Okay, how's this? How's that? Uh-huh. I th- okay, I see where you're going with this. So when we can take ourselves out of the blue water and look back and go, whoa, that's a lot of blue water right there. But when we're in it, we can't recognize it until we've gone through hell and high water to get out of it, to get ourselves back to who we really are instead of this do-gooder, peacekeeper, pleaser. Because we're, we, we end up chopping off parts of ourselves in order for the to other be person. Okay. Yes, right. to give away. Right, which is not good. So no, I can see where that would not be good. Eventually, and that's really turning one thing into another thing into another thing. So um, I was married before, and my husband was angry about everything. It didn't matter. Like, he could get angry at the sun. Like, so he was running. So he stopped drinking in order for us to get married, because I'm like, I'm not dealing with you when you drink. And he's like, I wanted to stop it anyway. I'm like, great. He's like, great. But I didn't understand, nor did he, that... Addiction has many faces, and if you give up one thing, it's going to take on another thing. So the thing that he took on was anger. So he was angry from the moment he got up to the moment he went to bed. When you're hanging out with an angry person, it sucks. (laughs) But I would give him excuses for his anger to my own self. Like, oh my god, he's so angry. Yes, but you know, it's tough right now, and and I would excuse his behavior. 
to the point where I was no longer existing and all of these excuses and all this attention was on him. So I kept giving away my power, my say, my rights, my happiness, my whatever that I was hanging on to, thinking, oh, I'm being a good wife. You know, I want to support him. He's in a time of need. I'll sacrifice this. Or I won't speak up about this. Or I'll this or I'll this. And then shrink into nothingness. And I was like, wait a minute. I thought I was being a good person. Right. So after we die into that situation and realize that nothing we do is going to help that person or change that situation, but that we have to love ourselves, then when we do self-care, uh, start understanding who we are and why we are and what we really want, and start feeding ourselves and filling our vessel up to the point that we have so much self-care and self-respect and self-love and are able to speak for ourselves and integrity and all of that stuff, then we can give from the excess. And that's boundless. And that doesn't turn up the resentment dial. It doesn't touch it at all. Not at all. Because I can give unconditionally. Just give for free. Just here, take this. Here, I love you for nothing. I like that so much more. It's easier. It's way easier. Yeah. So for me, what I took from it is when I find myself in the giving place, I'm going to immediately ask myself, is my resentment dial coming up? Mm -hmm. Because if it is, then I'm giving from the wrong place. Right. I got to take care of me first. Right. Self-care place. Right. I like how you said that. The self-care place. And then my excess can, can be, be as given generous, for free. generous as, as it ever wants because you take it. Oxygen mask first. Oh, I love. <laughs> I love that example. We can't give what we don't have. That's very true. We, <laughs> we are you going to give if you are not here? Right. <laughs> it's a bad visual. Anyways, moving past that, <laughs> um, is this something that you do in your line of, of work when you work with clients? Because you work one on one. Mm -hmm. Do you do groups as well, or I do the meditation at Love and Light. Every Tuesday, yes. and we bless the planet with loving kindness. It's the Twin Hearts Meditation, um, World Planetary Peace by Master Cho Kok Sui. It's beautiful. And anybody can do it. Just get the CD, you know, do it for yourself. You can create, as a new person meditating, you can create your own group around doing that CD together. Because we're blessing the planet with loving kindness. And in the laws and principles that we're using in the spiritual realm is what we give, so shall we receive. Because we're all one. Right. So we're, we're reducing suffering, loving kindness, bringing all of that in. So all the stuff that we're letting go of and wishing not to be anymore goes away. So more goodness can come through us. And people's lives are changing from the meditation. I was going to say, so this could be part of the spiritual practice Definitely. that helps you. Definitely. You know, see how to manage yourself in any given situation. Right. And then the personal work that I do um, is, is the deep work. So a lot of times when we have these emotional reactions, we don't even remember where they started. That's true. And we live from our pain. Because our pain says, don't forget me. Yeah, and, uh, I, yes. <laughs> don't go back into another mistake that happened like this one because it hurts too much. Yeah, I don't want to feel, feel it again. I don't right. want to make this mistake again. I don't want to... So we walk around fearful and therefore hindered. I remember Maitland. Maitland is a nine-year-old guide of mine. She's a hoot. And she explained to me one day, they wanted me to do something that I was very uncomfortable with. And I was just like, no, I'm going to stand my ground and say no. And she said to me, um, well, take it like this. If you were walking through the swamp, and an alligator came up and attacked you and bit you and you got an infection and it was horrible. And I told you that the answer you needed right now in your life is to go back into the swamp. She was, what would you tell me? I'd tell you there are many ways to skin a cat, Maitland, and I'm not walking back through the swamp. Like, no brainer. I'm going to find another way to do it because that's who I am. I'm kind of resourceful. Going, yeah, and I'm going to find it. And she was like, but... The only answer is to go back through the swamp. What would you do? I go, I'd hate you for it. I, I wouldn't want to do it. I'd be really upset and angry. That's not fair. She says, but this time you have to understand it's a new moment. It's a new place. 
and it can't be based on a previous experience or memory. And I was said, well, you're obviously trying to prove a point to me and put me in my place. So I'm getting that point. She goes, okay, so you walk through the swamp and you get healed. And it's perfectly fine. She goes, what's your takeaway? My takeaway is that I can't rely on my past experiences to ever repeat themselves because every moment is new. She goes, okay, that was fine. But I find I have to really think about that every time I'm, I'm making a choice or a reaction. So it, I think it's super valuable that you're bringing it to the table and putting it out here on the Lighter Side show for our Lumineers to listen to and look at it as a tool to better themselves in the way that they see fit. Is that We really have to pay attention to how are we making it worse? What are we feeling? What are we thinking? Where are we placing our ego? And... And what was the, the statement, our emotional, like an emotional muscle memory? Mm-hmm. How is it governing us? Right. Because I react to it all the time. We all do. Unknowingly. Unknowingly. That's why we have to stop to catch it. And that's why when we can empty out, like you did with your house, we empty <laughs> out so we can have more clarity to make a better decision. Because we're always making decisions from our capacity. And if we're full of S then we need to move some of that so we can have clarity, so we can bring in nourishment, something new, a new walk in the swamp. A new walk in the swamp without getting bit by an alligator. Maitland loves her alligators. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, how do we find you? How do we get a hold of you? The, my website's the easiest way, www.ursulalentini.com. <laughs> right here, here it is. Go here, check it out. And, and I have videos of more nonsense coming out of my mouth. <laughs> you can watch we love videos, your videos on YouTube. What's your YouTube channel? It's my same same name, YouTube. Oh. Ursula Lentini, oh. right here, YouTube. To try to keep things simple. We will definitely be keeping an eye on you, and I hope that you'll maybe find more time to come visit us at this the This is side. joyful. I yeah. love hanging out with you. You're the best, Jamie. <laughs> You're the, come here, You're the best. best. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. All right, Lumineers, remember, it's not woo-woo, it's true-true. It's a fact. (laughs) Bye.